You know, he kind of looks like he's sleeping, but then when you're when you're got your back turned, oh, here he goes. See, when you got your back turned, he jumps on you and goes in completely the opposite direction. Did he just take out the snake? Hello, everybody. Grace still plays, and we're back with more title ecology. Back in the garage backslash biome. Um, as you can see, things are looking a little bit sparse here, and there is a reason why. With the new update, the herbivores are eating much more than they ever had before, and actually all of my herbivores starve to death. So I feel pretty bad about that, but there's still things that we can do here. We can go ahead and recreate what we have, and that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'd like to get a couple of different critters down here, including some of these deer mice. And, you know, that's kind of the fun of Taito Ecology, though. Like, you don't have to worry too much about winning or losing. It's not just about that. It's more about having fun with it. It's more about just getting the time to be able to kind of create your own little environment the way you want it. And, I don't know, something that I like to do is, like I said, read about all these different plants and animals and stuff like that. And I think that that's pretty cool. Plus, we have this sweet new camera here, and I am loving this thing. This uh, this gives us so much more control, and it allows me to look at basically everything from every angle. And what it does, you can see here, we can see all the little blossoms of the honey mesquite, for instance. And I can go to any any tree here and be able to see, like this, uh, I think this is sand cherry? Yes, western sand cherry. We can see all the different little blossoms on it and everything, and that's really neat. I kind of like that. I'll tell you what. What else we can do here is start putting down a couple more critters. I think I'd like to put down some rattlesnakes. We have a bunch of mice kind of doing their thing over here. Sleeping on the job, the rattlesnake is going to have a real easy feast because apparently all the mice are, you know, having a siesta, I guess. I don't really know. Let's move over here to our plants though. If you're playing Taito Ecology with the new patch, if there's one suggestion I have for you, it's get plenty of plants out. I mean more plants than you think that you need because before the understanding that I had about how many plants I might need was vastly, it's, it's not correct anymore. Uh, you need probably, I don't know, I would guess anywhere between three and four times as many plants. Just, ju that's just from my playtime. Just from what I've seen. I like these little uh, sage brushes here too. These things are actually pretty neat. I'm gonna go over here and probably make some more milk vetch. This is kind of a, kind of an interesting plant. Let me put one down here and see if we can actually watch this thing get maybe get bloomed or pollinated or something I'm kind of curious oh 63 days until pollination is needed okay so we're not actually too worried about that some of the different plants here when they pollinate they like change their appearance the sand cherries are actually something that do that specifically actually I wonder if I can make a sand cherry do it for you guys see if I can make a sand cherry pop with great power here grab one of these guys put it down Actually, not the sand tray. Let's not do this. Let's do the... What do I want to do? Not this either. There should be one here. If I can remember exactly what it's called. Maybe it is a sand cherry. Uh, Yeah, okay. Well, let's do that, I guess. I could have sworn that there was one. That was slightly different than the sand cherry, but still bloom. There it is. Yeah, there, okay. So that is significantly different. It, it looked so different when I put it down. <laughs> you can see here it's blooming now. So when you put it down, it looks like this big puffy green blob. And then it turns into like just this beautiful flowering pink plant. Very neat. Over here... We know the su the sumac has these little different berries on them. I actually want to go ahead and read about that real quick because I'm kind of curious what exactly these berries do. Though humans may think skunk bush is smelly, animals love to eat its berries. 
And it says here, Temporal Range. Oh, thank you very much for the Taito coins. We could always use it. Skunkbush is so named because it smells bad to humans. As a member of the sumac family, it has many relatives that look similar but are poisonous. Now, I do know of poison sumac. Back in my younger days when I used to camp out, not so much anymore. Although, I gotta tell you, I'd really like to do it again. Skunkbush may live for 20 years in your biome. 20 years! Wow! That's what I'm talking about. If a skunk bush catches flame during a wildfire, its branches and leaves may burn up, but it won't die. Skunk bushes can re-sprout from their roots after a fire, which is a useful skill on the wildfire-prone prairie. Yeah, I hope that our prairie doesn't have to deal with any wildfires. I would appreciate that. Let's put down some badgers. Badgers always enjoy a healthy mixture of snakes, mice, and pretty much everything else. Let's get some jackrabbits down too. Hey there, Fox, are you looking at my badgers? Are you looking at my badgers wrong? Yeah, you go to sleep. Maybe this is, maybe this is the Fox's hunting technique. It's like the sleep foo or something like that. You know, he kind of looks like he's sleeping, but then when you're, when you're got your back turned, oh, here he goes, see? When you got your back turned, he jumps on you and goes in completely the opposite direction. Did he just take out the snake? He did. He took out this garter snake. All right, sleep foo is a thing. Holy cow. There you go, boys. Sleep foo. Take it from the fox. He knows exactly what he's doing. Let's see what this fox has to tell us, actually. Interesting noise the fox makes. Come on, give me the biodex for the fox. Give it to me. All right, no biodex for the fox. Might be another way for me to do this, actually. Let's go ahead and zoom out this way. And if I can just find the fox's area, there it is. Let's do this. Go way down here. Go ahead and click on this. Nope, we can't click on nothing at all. All right, well, whatever. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm semi-sure that you can click on this. How about that? Yeah, you guys can't fool me. We're going to find out about this fox one way or the other. You can't stop me. Uh, no, here we go. Okay, there is something that we can learn about foxes. Here we go, boys. Female foxes will nurse their cubs alone for a few days. After about a week, the cub's father and older siblings will bring food back to the den for them to eat. Females usually give birth to about five babies once per year. Okay. Red foxes become sexually mature at 10 months old. Juveniles stay near their parents until they are old enough to mate, but may remain with their parents for longer. A fox may live to be 12 years old. So here you have a case of the foxes. They don't want to move out from the parents, and the older parent foxes, the gray foxes, if you will, are like, oh, get a job. Get out of the house. Do your laundry. Notes. Foxes who help care for their offspring that is not their own are doing more than just being nice. These helper foxes are often younger and haven't had their own litter of cubs yet. Hum helping their parents or siblings care for cubs gives them valuable practice for raising their own babies someday. That's pretty neat, actually. Social life. Red foxes are nocturnal or crepuscular. Hmm, okay. Red foxes do not form packs like wolves or other canines. They may live in family groups, but solitary foxes are common. Foxes often take over the abandoned burrows or dens of other animals and may use the same den for, gen for several generations. Notes, what does the fox say? Tell me, what does the fox say? Foxes make several noises, including a high-pitched grunt and squeak. The mating call for the fox is a high-pitched wail. That sounds a bit like a human screaming in terror. Oh, no! That's terrible. So, uh... When it's... <laughs> when it's mating time, I guess you hear... Ah! From the foxes. <laughs> that's That's horrible. I guess the female foxes find it sexy, though. I, I don't know what else to say about that. Let's go ahead and put down some rabbits. There's nothing else I could say there. I might want to put down a coyote, too. But I think we'll put down our coyote kind of on the outskirts over here. Because the coyotes always have a long, long motion of movement. So I'm not worried about them, like, not having enough stuff to do. I do want to get at least a couple of big guys down here. Let's go ahead and put down a pronghorn antelope. And also one of these mule deer. Where do I want to put this mule deer at? Right here. There we go. 
Now we're starting to look a little bit more like a grassland, but it's still missing something. You guys know what it is. It's missing some bison. A nice big herd of bison over here. And let's use up this energy, get one more over here. There we are. Now things are going to start looking a little bit more packed. And we have a lot of area still left to use here. I mean, we're probably using, I don't know, about a third of the biome right now. So there's still plenty left to do. The one thing I notice is that our plant life is lasting much longer here. So everyone's not starving horribly like they were before and going ravenously insane on all of my plant life. I do want to put down probably another mushroom kind of over here. There we go. And more plants. Definitely more plants. Definitely another honey mesquite because look at how awesome these honey mesquites are with fruit and leaves. So good. Even the eastern uh, red cedar, not quite as good as the honey mesquite. Very impressed with this. And the buffalo could, of course, use some buffalo grass over here. Let's put some down. Oh, all the buffalo are really roaming right now. Holy cow, these buffalo must have had their cup of coffee in the morning. This one's going, he's running a marathon. I don't know where he's going. I don't think that this coyote could take down this buffalo, though. You don't want to mess with a buffalo coyote. I'm going to tell you something. Let's put down some grass over here by this buffalo. I feel bad if he's like all alone with nothing to eat. There you go, buddy. You can have a little bit of a uh, little bit of gram of grass. Hopefully you won't starve to death. Now you can see here, this antelope is actually taking a bite out of this milk vetch. And I wonder if we'll get the opportunity to see the leaves go down here. It says 39 of 50. Oh, well, that's nice. Right when I came over to take a look at you, you decided to uh, to head on out. Well, good for you. Our king snakes have a low population. I kind of wonder why. If I can find them, I might find out. Now, it could be because they were being hunted by the foxes, which would make sense. Let's see if we can find these snakes right over here. I think that they're way over here. There they are. Right, so I do like the fact that they give you this this exclamation point when something is wrong two of four doesn't look like they're starving looks like they're doing okay i mean i guess there's only two of four of them left this consumer can eat poisonous venomous life forms maybe if we put down another one they'll kind of uh you know have a have a little friendship going on put down one right over here another king snake put it right in front of that fox there these foxes really get a workout no wonder they're in such good shape. Look at this fox. Sleek and smooth. It's a good looking fox. Let's go ahead and put down a couple more regular grasses down here. And maybe a couple of those sumac bushes too. Those are actually kind of neat. Oh, prairie blazing stars. We haven't got any of those down. And when those guys start blooming, they always look neat. So we'll put down some of those over there and a couple over here as well. Looks like they are in stasis for 23 days. So we don't have to worry about those for quite a while, actually. Let me put some more over here. And what I want to do more of this milk vetch. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head. I wonder, are you guys eating some of these ants? Oh, look at this little guy here. Taking a bite out of the ant population, 194 ants actually, and this little this little deer mouse is uh, grabbing himself an insectoid snack. Well, that's fine. You guys can do that. I don't mind. But like I had said, a little bit more of this skunk bush would be nice, right about there. Oh, right in front of this bison. Look at that. I helped you out. Oh, you're gonna turn around it. Okay. Oh, we got to see the skunk the skunk bush uh, bloom just now. Or flower, I should say, technically. Not really blooming, flowering. Down here, what do we have? This sage bush, getting pretty eaten. Everyone seems to enjoy chewing on this. Holy cow. Bison eat a lot of sage bush. Whoa. <laughs> uh, okay, knowing that, probably going to want to put down quite a few more. Especially since you guys seem to like the sage bush that much. Now... Let's go ahead and take a look at something real fast. Okay, so, and I'm not sure if this was like this before either, but we noticed, now that sagebush was just totally destroyed just now, so it's gone. 
but it had all of its leaves destroyed. I don't really remember if all the plants were like that or not. I don't seem to remember the sage bushes being like that. So if that was a new thing, I appreciate that as well. More grass. Now I believe it was Michael, one of my one of my viewers, that had said that the grass multiplies. If that was Michael, then thank you. If that wasn't Michael, then I'm sorry I just got your name wrong. <laughs> Oh, my memory is slowly deteriorating. Not too bad, though. I can still remember most things. What does this say? This producer is poisonous. It can only be eaten by certain marked consumers. I didn't know that. Is there any other plants over here that are poisonous? I didn't even think about that. Common milkweed. Poisonous, is it? Hold on a second here. I want to put some of this down, and then I want to read about this. What does this all mean? The milkweed is the favorite of bees and butterflies who pollinate the flowers. The pollinated flowers turn into seed pods containing hundreds of seeds. When the pods burst open, the seeds are scattered by the wind. It can also per reproduce vegetatively. It will begin reproducing during its first year of life in your biome. In areas populated by humans, milkweeds have shown themselves to be negatively affected by smog from cars and other forms of pollution. This smog causes damage to the plant's leaves, which can result in death. Let's look at this here. The Latin name for the milkweed family, oh boy, Asclepius, comes from the Greek god of healing and medicine. The milkweed is a common ingredient in many folk remedies for various ailments. What? This sounds more like a healing herb than a poisonous herb, but oh well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna doubt it. I'm sure it's very, very possible. Maybe I want to get down another eastern cottonwood too. Maybe like one back here somewhat. Where can I put this? Can I put this anywhere around here? Eh, it doesn't really look like it. Oh, I can put this like, oh no, not right over there either. Go ahead and cancel out of this. I want to put the, I want to put this one kind of over here. Yeah, we'll put one right over here. That's what we'll do. Put it right on top of this hill. There we are. Oh yeah. Looking good. Right, right in the side of the hillside there. That's going to be just fine. And I do want to get down at least more grass before we call it a day. And the reason why is because I'd really like to not come back to all of my critters uh, starving to death and dying. I would appreciate that. More of these sage bushes too. Man, these sage bushes get you a lot of mileage for your 15 cost energy. Let's go ahead and put those down. There we are. All the sage bushes. We'll have a big cluster of, you know what? Yeah, we'll have a big cluster of sage bushes over here. Who says we can't? We can do whatever we want. It's our biome, right guys? There we are. Awesome. Little, little more, a little more sage bush in this area. Excellent. Maybe can I squeeze this last sage bush in somewhere? Maybe right over here. There we are. Know those buffaloes like those sage bushes. This one right now is heading over to it and almost ate half of a sage bush in one bite. And I imagine that means that this sage bush is going to get eaten in one bite too. Holy cow! All right. So let's use all of our energy for sage bushes here because holy cow. They are prime rib for these, for these bison. I don't know, maybe that's a bad joke to make, bison. Don't worry, I'm not going to turn you guys into steak. I love you guys. Two more we can put out. Let's do that real fast. There we are. All right. Last sage bush is down. Excellent. Guys, things are looking pretty good in this biome so far. Even with the new updates, I think that we have enough plant life now to really make a go of our creatures not starving to death. So I hope you join me next time for Tito Ecology. Till then though, stay foxy and much love. <laughs>